Hi, I'm George, and today I'll be showing you how to remove people from a photograph. We have an unusual problem here. There's a person right behind this person here. You can see there's the head back here, a couple of legs back here. Same thing over here, left-hand side. There's a person right back in there, and a regular background person back over there, left-hand side. So pretty tricky. This is not an easy fix, and there aren't any real good shortcuts for doing this. So I'll show you how I go about taking care of one of these more difficult projects. I won't do the whole thing, but we'll end up like that with it nicely cleaned up in the background. Easy, straightforward, but it does take some attention to detail to do this. If you want to have some notes about how I did this and you want to have this download picture and the Photoshop Elements file, all of that stuff is available in the HDG Photo Coach program. And if you're a member, you get access to that automatically. I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. Okay, let's just start by making a copy of the background here. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. This is the finished layer up here. We're not going to be using that. We'll be working on this new copy right here. The reason I make a duplicate is because we're going to be changing the actual image. So I want to have this one saved down here just in case things go wrong. I can always go back to my original right there inside the file. Okay, now this one takes just standard techniques. And what I'll be doing is using the polygonal lasso tool, making selections, and then doing some clone stamp work to get rid of the stuff we don't want. Let's go over here. Here's the polygonal lasso tool, and it's right down there. It's that one. Let's set this at a new selection. I have my feathering set at zero pixels. And then come in here and make a very careful selection right around the part that you want to get rid of. So I'll be doing just a little bit at a time, just a section at a time. And I'll do the first two or three sections in here, and then just talk you through the rest so you'll see how I approach this project. Now, when you're working with this tool, just do a click, move the pointer to another click, move the pointer, and take your time on this. If you click too fast, it's going to collapse the selection, and you have to start over again, which you don't want to do. So slow and steady on this is the way to go. And then just work around, and again, work on this in little sections. And being zoomed in like this really does help. And there is like right here, you need to figure out what is foreground and what is background. And I'm thinking that thing right back there is part of the background person. And then out and around over here, get close to your beginning, double click, and that makes your selection. We can now clone stamp inside of here without damaging anything else. So I'll go to the clone stamp tool. I have it set for a soft edge, as you can see here. And I had the size at about 40 pixels opacity at 100. And that's a pretty good size for this. And I want to just clone some stuff right in here to cover that head in the background. Now you don't want to clone from over here and stick it here because it's too easy to see a duplication in there. Sometimes you have no choice, but if possible, try to clone from someplace else, like over here, left-hand side. So I'll hold the Alt key down, I'll click right there, let go, and I can then come in here and just paint that out. There we are, and get that cleaned out. This works out well because we have this nice random background in here. Sometimes you may want to do another couple of spots just to break things up a little bit so it looks more random. If that happens, just come in, do a little clone stamping over that, and we're all set. Okay, Control D to deselect, and that fixes that spot right up here. There's actually kind of a hard edge right in here. I did that on purpose to get the best clone stamp possible, and then we can go in and soften that edge up. I'll zoom in a bit further. You can see how it's just a bit on the hard side right along in here. So for that, we'll go over to the blur tool, which is right there, sit at a soft brush. I use the left square bracket, bring my size way down, and then just come right over that edge, just do a little bit of blurring on that edge, and that then softens that up enough so it pops back in properly. I'm just matching the right side over here to what the left side looks like. Doesn't take much, just a little bit to soften up that edge and give us a nice edge. There we go. And we have something else happening right up here. You can see this sometimes. You actually see it over here, left-hand side. This isn't part of our background problem, but this is an artifact that comes in with JPEG. When it compresses the image, you'll frequently get these outlines happening in here. And what's causing this is that there is a very light area here against a darker area there. And the JPEG just gives you these bright lines sometimes along your edge. I'm not going to worry about that here because it looks okay, but that will come up sometimes in an image. For instance, if I'm over here and I'm taking out a black area in behind, 
what I'll do is I'll try to come in with my selection on the light side of that, like right in here, and leave that dark part out. Work just like that, back and around. And you can see in here how I left that dark line as part of what's being taken out. It's just one little trick to make this work out a bit better. I'm going to do one more spot on this. Let's grab one of these difficult spots in here. Maybe right down here. This is a pretty difficult one. So you have these brick lines in here. The leg is just behind that leg. So we'll do this section in here. Same basic trick. We're going to be using the polygonal lasso tool. And just taking our time and making a nice selection. And there's zero feathering on this. And that little dark spot there, that's part of that background. I want to get rid of that. This bag over here on the right-hand side, this is the bag that that gentleman on the right-hand side is carrying. So that stays in the foreground. And then I just want to get a little ways away from that leg. Then I can come around. Just out here someplace. That's just having some space to work in. And then come down here and put the shoe and the side of the leg right where that is overlapping. And a little difficult to see sometimes because I'm looking at black on top of black and texture on top of texture. So on anything like this, just take your time. Hold the space bar down to go ahead and move your image like that. You can just move the image with the space bar. And when you're working on these curves, and if they're large curves, you can put your dots further apart. If it's a smaller curve, you put your dots closer together. And that should work out fine. And just come up here, get up to the edge of the jacket here. And come around that. And then right down here and back to our beginning. And then I can go back to the clone stamp tool and clean this out. In these kind of tight areas, I'll bring my brush size down a lot. Left square bracket brings the brush size down. And just find something which you can copy. Like in here, I have this little line right there. It's a background that I want to copy this part over here. And this is going to take several little spots, little moves to do this. Hold the Alt key down, click on that, and just go over just a little bit. And overlap. There we go. And back over here again. Come down to here and the bottom section of that right there. And then right in here. Again, just a little bit here and a bit more right there. And that cleans that out. This little corner up here, just something right down here, and just bring it into the corner. And just go in a few times. Whenever you see that crosshair thing, it means I'm holding down the Alt key at that point. Now in here, let's take this same line. I'll come over here as far as I can. Alt and click. And then I'll come over to this side, and I'm going to match that line up. Then just extend that line out. And I'll just worry about just the line right now. And let's get that worked in and take it clear to the end of our selection. There we go. Once that's out, I can then come back in and work on this stuff a bit more carefully. And this may take several repositions of your clone stamp tool. Right here, come out, Alt click, and then back in again, the Alt click, and just work in to get that section in here. This also works out well in these areas to do several clicks anyway. It cuts down on the chance of having repeating patterns happening. Stay away from that if possible. Okay, that fixes that top section. Now down here, there's this shadow right there. I want to bring that shadow clear across. Same trick as we did in the line above. It will take several positions in here to make this work just several times. And work your way across. So as you can see, this isn't fast or easy necessarily. It's very doable, but it does take some attention to detail and some patience. I spent about an hour on the sample that I showed at the beginning of this video to get this done. So it's again not a quick process, but not difficult. This just requires some patience. And then same thing over here. Once you're a little ways away, once you have some space in here, you can then bring your brush size up a bit. That's the right square bracket. That's just one click. Larger brush obviously is faster than a smaller brush. So when you can, bring your brush size up and just work a little section at a time. Make this as easy as possible. Okay, now when you have lines like this, you want to bring the lines over. Same exact trick as we did up here. Click on the line, bring it over here. You can see how that line is showing in there. You can just match that up. And to get it clear over, it will take several movements. And then we can come back in and get this bit cleaned out. And just work your way down. Now in here, I want to do just these lines here. I don't want to do this line. So I'll click here. And I'll work this one vertically. It's a little off right there, so let's come back in and just get that piece. 
And again, sometimes it does take a few shots to get this exactly right. Yeah, click right there. And we'll just work our way in. And you also can copy from someplace else. Let's say I'll copy from over here somewhere. Maybe this bit right here. I'll just click over here, bring that up. And I can bring that in just for some variation. It should work out fine because of the kind of lines that we have. They're relatively random. And then come back into here again. And that's really all there is to it. Just taking your time and working just a bit at a time and trying to match up anything that's easy to spot, like those lines in there, and copy that as much as you can. So that's the approach on this, is just taking your time, making a selection, staying inside of your selection, and then doing a lot of careful choices on your clone stepping to copy over what needs to be matched. I did the same thing for the rest of this. The few things that I copied, for instance, there's a hand right here, so I just copied the wall back here and moved over here. Same thing up here, we have this railing. Copy the railing and move that in a little bit. A little railing down there. Now, this railing could be just taken out and put in with some trees. Nobody would notice that. Sometimes doing something else is easier. One more thing that's just a little bit difficult in here, and that's up here on the top of her head. She has these real thin hairs flying around out there. You can see them right here on top of the hair and behind. No real good way to get green inside of those. So what I did was I made my brush size larger. You can see it right there. Come out here someplace. I'll click. Again, soft edge brush. And then I came in and just lost a little bit of that hair. And reposition again. And just try to make it look natural up along that top. And I think that works out pretty well. There's this line over here. I'm going to just get rid of that. It's I don't know what that is, but... If it's not there, it's going to be easier to match our picture. We'll just take that out. And I think that works out successfully on the top of the head. Everything else is done with the clone stamp tool and working inside of selections. So there you go. That's the approach I use when doing this more difficult kind of background person removal trick. Just taking the time to do it and paying close attention to the areas that I'm copying from and copying to. Now again, if you want to get this file to practice on it, this is a good practice file because it is a very difficult one. If you want to get this practice file, you've got the Photoshop Elements file for this also. And if you want my notes about how I did this, all of that stuff is available in the HDG Photo Coach. When you get that, you're automatically a lifetime member of my channel, which gives you access to all the downloads for these projects. And you can get that right here. I'll also put the link in the description so you can click right to it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. That really does help out a lot. Even if you watch a lot of my videos, just hit that like button each time and that helps the channel out. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And when you do hit that bell icon so you get notifications of my new videos. I'm doing new videos all the time. You don't want to miss out on any of those. And I'll see you next time.